today we're going to talk about the Biffy control box. The Biffy control box is the brains behind the Biffy direct gas actuator GIG. The Biffy control box has many different configurations that range from local control only all the way up to line break and ESD. We're going to walk through a few of those now. The typical control box has two solenoids with levers and then your gas supply, your gas exhaust, and it's all gonna be in a simple package that we saw on the last slide. Gas is gonna come in through the bottom, 610 down here. It's gonna come up to where our solenoids are and our hand levers. And it's also gonna to go to our spring valves down here. Normal operation for a local only box, it's going to be pushing down on the lever to shuttle this valve. We're gonna allow gas to come through here, shuttle this pilot, and then allow the gas supply to go to the open side of the actuator. During that, we will exhaust from the closed, and we can have the same operation for the closed side, pushing down the lever, allowing gas to flow through here and out to the actuator. If we follow the red line, we'll, be, we'll see what we just discussed. Gas supply coming through. When we shuttle PC closed, it allows the gas to go through that valve, push down on the spring operated valve, and allow the gas to go through. Local remote is gonna be another form where you wanna send a signal from a control panel or another auxiliary site. Here we have to run power via 24 VDC, 12 VDC, or 120 AC. You can see the connection through here in 966. That goes to the top of both solenoids. So now we have the ability to send an electrical signal or locally push down the levers to move gas through the actuator. Typical ESD configurations of the Biffy control box are rising pilot pressure to open and close, falling pilot pressure to open and close, high-low dual pilots to open and close, electric failsafe, ESD with automatic reset, and ESD with manual reset. We'll walk through those now. This configuration has local remote, which we looked at earlier, and it's gonna add functionality for low pressure to close with a manual reset. To do that, we add in a few things. We're gonna have 745, which is a low pressure pilot, 681, which is a latching valve, and 626, which is the shuttle valve. We have our pilot supply, supply pressure coming in below into the pilot, and the rest of 724 is going to be the same as what we saw earlier. Also, with 966 bringing in our power to the solenoids. To close this actuator on falling pressure, we would be sensing the pressure here. Once it goes beneath the set point of 745, this valve will then shuttle, allowing gas to come in here and go to 681 as well as 626. 681 is a latching valve that disables PO and DO, so local and remote open, to occur during the ESD close function. So this will shuttle, it'll allow this to be locked out for the rest of the close stroke. Now we go over here to where our gas valve 626 has shuttled disabling local and remote control of PC. We're overriding this, allowing gas supply to flow through here and to the closed side. In order to reset this, you have to go out and physically unlatch 681. If we follow the red lines, we'll see what we just talked about there. We still have 
our supply gas coming through here, flowing through DC into the closed side. And how we got there was gas going through the shuttled pilot, moving the latching valve to lock this DO in place. And then also our supply gas coming up here, shuttling 626 and shuttling DC, allowing the gas to flow through to the closed actuator. Other resets, apart from manual, which we just saw, are automatic reset, which allows the actuator to return to its non-ESD position when pilot pressure returns to normal. Available with or without the isolation valve during ESD. We also have the ability to do a remote reset, which allows a signal to be sent from your PLC or control room or somewhere else to reset that actuator, allowing you not to go back out to reset the latch, as we saw before. In this schematic, we have local, low pressure to open with the automatic reset that we just discussed. We see that there's no 682 here. We have no 626 check valve. This will act in the same way, but will not isolate the closed side of the Biffy control box. So if you were to send an electri electric signal, if there was the solenoids hooked up, or if you were to go and manually shuttle this valve, you could fight the low pressure to open case that this was designed for. In this case, we have local plus remote plus low pressure to close with an automatic reset. Instead of the latching valve, we just have a spring operated shuttle valve here that will do the same thing as before, but once the conditions are met by the pilot and they raise above the set point, this will go back into normal operating conditions. For some ESD applications, you want to have an auxiliary tank that will take over if your normal gas supply is removed. This, is very sim this schematic is very similar to what we've seen before, a couple slides ago, with local and remote, a pilot valve, and a manual reset. The only difference is that along with the gas supply, we have an auxiliary tank that will take over in the case of the normal gas supply not being available. It falls below the critical level that is sized to open the actuator or it's removed. This will usually allow you one or two strokes depending on the size. Lastly, we have a local and remote with an electric fail state and automatic reset with lockout. In this case, 669 is replacing our pilots that we used earlier. In this case, we're not sensing a falling or rising pilot pressure. We're sensing an electric signal that will be sent to that solenoid to shuttle it. The rest of the schematic is very similar to what we've already seen. We have a shuttle valve, and we have an automatic reset valve right here that's gonna block out the open side during the close stroke. And lastly, one of the more complicated designs that we'll have with redundancy is a local to close with local and remote to open, low pressure pilot to close, and electric fail safe to close. In this scenario, we put together many of the schematics that we've already seen. We still have local and remote, but the remote this time is only going to the open side. To close this, we have local. To open, we have local and remote which can be sent as a signal. We have a low pressure pilot, as we saw in our first ESD schematic, but we've also added an electric fail safe to close.
If you have more questions about those schematics or specific applications, please give us a call. We'd BRC ProTex would love the opportunity to work with you, look at your application, and walk through the available specification control schematics that are available, or help you de develop one that meets your needs. Along with those schematics, we also have many accessories that can be added. Pressure regulators, these are used to limit gas supply to actuator if it exceeds the MAOP or not to exceed the valve mast. We also have torque limiters. These ensure that the supply gas does not exceed that of the actuator MOP or exceed the valve MS MAST. We also have noise mufflers, pressure relief valves, if we have tanks, as well as vent and exhaust port protectors. There's many different scenarios that the Biffy control box can solve your problem with. We have the Biffy GIG, the manual hand pump, and the control schematics that we've talked about, and many more that can be specified for your applications. Please give us a call today.